Hello everyone and welcome back to another Power Automate video. This is going to be a quick video with quite a powerful tip on updating items in SharePoint lists. If we take the list example that is on the screen at the moment, I've got a normal list here with a single line of text field, a choice field, another choice field, um, another choice field and a multi-choice field and a URL. Now, some of these fields are mandatory. And what happens when you use the update item action normally is that it forces you to fill in these values and won't save the flow until you have filled them in. Now, that's okay for a list like this with a low number of columns, but on big lists, it can be a bit of a pain. So I'm going to show you a really easy way to update just a single value or a few values that you might want to update. So the first thing is we've got this list name, which is just a compose action. And I'm just going to move that to the top and bring these down below this terminate action. So this is just a compose action. And what would normally happen when we choose update item so I'm going to bring that to there. Is we will put in our site address and the list name. And then it would helpfully go away to SharePoint and get the um, schema for that list and allow us to fill in all the fields. But in this case, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to delete that action and show you how to do this. I'm going to do update item again. I'm going to pick the site address just as I did before, but in the list name, I'm going to say enter custom value. And I'm going to put in the output of that list name compose action. The ID will still be from get item. And now it doesn't give me any of the fields to fill in. It just, just says item, item with changed properties. So here we can, I'll just copy this part. If we want to update a simple text field, let's just have a look. Update that value. So if I run that now, that will update that field. And this single and this uh, single line of text field is very um, simple to do. And as you can see, that is now updated. So we'll just quickly go through the other field types, but you get the idea now. Now I've got a blog post on this, so you can I'll link it in the description, and you can copy the code samples. Um, so let's just quickly go through it. So we've done our Let's get rid of this one now. This one is the standard one. We've done the text field. So let's have a look at update choice. So update choice, you put in the field name. And as you can see, I need to use the internal SharePoint field name that's got a space in it, that field. Um, and we just specify the value. And that is an object, that value, because this is just a single choice column. And now let's move on to a multi-choice column. Now multi-choice column is slightly different because we have to specify all of the values that we want to, up to update. So that is an array and you can see that array is indicated there by these square brackets, which contain the objects of the values. Um, hyperlink. Is straightforward it's just the field name and then the new value and then finally we can update all of these fields together just by specifying the JSON for all of the fields so this really just simplifies the process and if we had a, a table with you know a list with 
50 columns, and this would really make things much more simple in Power Automate. This can also be done with a HTTP request to SharePoint, but it's a bit more complicated, and if you just want to do a quick update, then I kind of like this method um, because it's just clean. So let's just run it quickly and see how it looks. Obviously, it's all going to take the values from this final action. Um, so let's change some stuff. Test, test. All these final tests. Uh, I'll change this one to single. And I'll just change the status to just subscribed. Let's save that. Now all of these other actions are going to run, but then in the end it's going to get updated by this final action. So they all worked. We got our output back and let's just see if it updated. Yeah. So that's a very quick tip, um, but I use it quite often actually, and it is dead handy because I just get annoyed by having to fill in those mandatory columns when they're not due to be updated anyway. So I hope you find that useful. Apologies for the slightly sore throat today, but hopefully you can still understand what I'm saying. Do check the blog post out because you can just copy the examples, example JSON from there. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.